well, welcome back to the channel and in this video we're going to take a look at the UNI-T UT233 power clamp meter. And the reason why I've got this is to test it alongside the MTR105 from Mega on the little inverter that I've got that I've had troubles with. The three motor and phase rotation meters you see there on the left, the Fluke, the Amp Probe and the Peak Meter, they will give me a voltage indication but they won't give me a voltage reading in the same manner that the MTR105 does. So I've got this UNI-T233 because that will give me a three phase voltage reading. Um, I did have a look around, it's the best I could find for doing this other than going down the route of an actual full three phase power meter uh, which will be a lot more expensive than the UNI-T would be. Disadvantage to the UNI-T is that whilst it will do me three phase voltage and phase rotation of the supply, it will not do the motor rotation, which is what the three phase meters will do alongside with the MTR105 as well. That will also do that. Okay, so we'll have a little look into the case and see what we get for our money. Okay, so in the case we have a little CD-ROM, which I believe has the software in there, probably got the manual as well. Uh, we have a paper copy of the manual. Um, Unity, to be honest, the last couple of instruments I've looked at of theirs, the manuals have improved quite significantly. So I'm pretty sure this will be uh, just in English. But it's quite a nice step-by-step -step process for each measurement. Little connection diagram that you get. And then the little expected display. So quite nice. Sometimes they're a bit quirky with the language, but they have improved quite a bit. Um, we have a little adapter here, which is USB to connect to a computer. We have a set of leads here. Uh, zoom in for the three phase. We have black and red lead. Uh, yellow and blue crop clips to go with. Yeah, I'm play it. Oh, it's, a, it's a sealed bag. Uh, yeah, medium sized crop clips I would say. Pretty good. Should be adequate for most uh, situations. Uh, same red and black. And four AA battery cells. And then the actual meter itself and obviously the case um, and again the the cases have been improving with the unity as well it's quite a solid plastic case got a little uh, molded sections for the meter it's got some pull out bits there as well you could uh, take out if you wanted and the foam insert at the top not a bad effort not a bad effort at all into uh, one side and we'll have a little bit better look at the meter and put some battery cells into it. She's quite a, a large chunky meter. Let's uh, see. Uh, uh, single Phillips on the battery compartment. Uh, no the screw isn't captivated on that, so uh, pretty easy to lose. Okay, so put some power on. So that's three phase voltage now. The light shows up. Well, the light shows up quite a bit better, doesn't it? 
So what I thought I'd just do is run the Uni T233 up on the uh, good old injection test set and we'll see how it reads the voltages, uh, currents and the power that it is capable of doing. Uh, I have the injection test set here connected up three phase into the instrument at the moment. I'm not using the neutral because I kind of feel as using it on a motor that's how I, I would just have the three connections. I wouldn't have the neutral connection and I've just got a single phase current going into the current clamp table which is actually on the 50 turn coil. So I'll reposition the camera so it can see the instrument display and we'll see what happens. Alrighty so the instrument is set up in RST mode and we will inject some voltages. Um, okay so it's seeing it as a it's actually a single phase voltage because so I'm injecting 63 and a half which should be 110 phase to phase. Uh, this one should be uh, 230 and then 230 phase to earth and then this next one should be a mismatch which we've got 106, 149, now that's interesting. Okay, that was slightly irregular. When it's matched, it gives a phase to earth reading, uh, and when they mismatch, it gives more of a phase to phase reading. Okay, I'll move on to uh, the current test. So, to get to current mode, we go into the menu, click the first button. Uh, this will give me kilowatts now, and I have the amps down in the corner there on the right hand side, and the voltage up here on the left. Switch our light on and we'll hit the O button. So it should be 50 amps, 50.6, 100 amps. Um, 5 amps, so it should be 250 amps, sorry, 252.9, and then we are. 10 amps, which should be 500 amps. Got the light back on. 507, and the final one should be 750 amps, I believe. 15 amps. Yes, yeah, 750 amps, and we're 762 amps, so that's quite a little bit out there, isn't it? Current wise. Uh, what we'll just do is I'll just move the clamp around as well. So we're 762 amps. Uh, bring the clamp down to the bottom, 764, so that's a 2 amp difference there. Take it up to the top, 762, that's comparable. Back down to the middle there, take them over, and take them over back the other way. Okay, so that's a fairly stable instrument, just uh, doesn't seem to be too accurate on the current there. Okay, um, so that's that one. So obviously we had power readings there. I do have a set to do power as well. So to get to the power mode, um, we have KVA there. So this will be the reactive power that we will find out on here. So we'll do that one. So that should virtually be zero KVAR really. So that's six KVAR, 101 amps. So the amps should stay the same really, and just the KVR should go up 1.64 and I'll stick a table at the end again for all the readings. And there's the final one of 16.43 KVAR. Okay, so my next one off of here. So we can do this with the same set of tests here, and we can do the power factor which should be Pretty much unity for the first one. And that's 0.965, which more than 15 degrees. That's 
30 degrees, it's not quite 9, not quite 65. And then 45 degrees, which should be 0 0.70. And then the next one we go on to is actually the phase angle itself. So again, we'll do the same set of tests. Should be reading 0, which it is. Should be 15 degrees, and we're reading 14. Should be 30 degrees. And we're going to smack on, and final one of 45 degrees, which again we'll smack on. Just the amps is a fraction high again. One, it should be reading 100. Okay, so that's that one done. So final one of the set of displays is frequency. We'll start him again. This should be standard 50 hertz. Uh, ooh, yep, thank you. It is a little bit slow to respond. I'm going to 60 hertz. It's a bit quicker. And then we have 200 hertz. We worked on 200 hertz in the construction industry. Slack on as well. Frequency is always one that's usually very good. And then finally 400 hertz, use that on generators. You can might be used in aircraft as well. Yeah, so frequency was a good set of results there, although it's jumping about when it's uh, switched off, isn't it? Okay. Okay, so that's uh, a set of readings done. I say I'll tabulate them in at the end of the uh, video, and you can peruse them for yourself. Uh, thanks for watching, hope you've enjoyed it, and I'll see you again in the next video.